Hi, I'm Anneke Zuiderwijk and I'm a researcher at Delft University of Technology. And in this video, we will be exploring open government data and its relationship to the open government movement. In order to function, governments need to collect and process a considerable amount of data each day. So what is this data? And how is it used? And what data is in the public's interest? After this video, you should be able to describe basic concepts related to open government data, including its key elements, a commonly agreed definition, and examples of open government data. So let's start with the key elements. As the name suggests, it is often stated that open government data consists of three key elements, namely openness, government, and data. A fourth element that is often forgotten is the use of the data. Open government data needs to be usable. So the combination of these four elements, openness, government, data and usability, is what we focus on in this part of our course. Although there are more elements to an open government, the release and use of open government data is an important element, since this may provide insight in what the government is doing. So how do we define open government data? Researchers may have different opinions about this. However, they generally agree that open government data should be structured, so it should be Excel spreadsheets or comma separate value files, but it can also be in documents, videos and audio files. The data should be machine readable, so that machines such as computers are able to interpret it so that useful insights can be obtained. Open government data is data that governments and publicly funded resource organizations actively publish on the internet. It is for public reuse and the data can be accessed without restrictions and used without payment. So this means that citizens do not need to request the data, but it is published by the initiative of the government. The data may also be collected by research organizations. Open government data is ideally accessible without restrictions. However, in practice, there may be restrictions, such as licenses or unuser-friendly infrastructures to access the data. It is not about the publication of personal, sensitive or secret data, but about the publication of data that is applicable for opening. The level of structure of open data is often described using the five-star deployment scheme created by Tim Berners-Lee. A one-star level is the lowest, while five stars is seen as the ideal level. Berners-Lee states that the first level, or one star, is given to data that is made available on the web in whatever format under an open license, such as PDF files or image scans of a table. When we go one level up, data uh, are made available as structured data, such as Excel tables. On the third level, open data is made available in a non-proprietary open format, such as CSV or comma separate value files. Four stars are assigned to data sets which use uniform resource identifiers or URIs to denote things. URIs make it possible for people to refer to specific datasets. And finally, on the ideal level, open data is linked to other data to provide context. For instance, through the Resource Description Framework, or RDF. The five-star deployment scheme of Berners-Lee makes it possible to distinguish between different types of open data. So which real-life examples of open government data do you know? In 2006, Deckers and colleagues described examples of types of open government data. Open government data can be geographic data, such as address information, aerial photos, buildings, cadastral information, but also geodetic networks, geology, hydrographical data, and topographic information. It can also be legal data, 
which includes decisions of national, foreign and international courts, national legislation and treaties. The data can be meteorological data, including climate data and models and weather forecasts. It is also social data, such as statistics data about the economy, employment, health, population, public administration. Transport data can also be open government data. For example, information on traffic congestion, work on the roads and public transport, and vehicle registration. And a sixth type of open government data mentioned by Deckers and colleagues is business data, such as Chamber of Commerce information, official business registers, patent and trademark information, and public tender databases. In sum, Different types of open government data are available. The data are often fragmented and provided at different places. For instance, this is the portal of the US government containing thousands of datasets. Eurostat provides open government data about crime statistics in Europe. And publicspending.net provides open government data about how much public money governments spend on which companies. Junar provides services to transform open government data into resources useful for citizens. These are interesting examples of open government data, although this overview is not exhaustive. More examples of open government data can be found on the edX platform. We have uploaded all presented links there, so please check them out. Do you have any questions or suggestions about open government data? please post them on our discussion forum. Here are the references related to this presentation. Thank you for your attention.